Hey guys, I'm going to walk you through the process of troubleshooting the power wedge here on this 2008 Malibu VLX21. Uh, this, they, a lot of the Malibus have a very similar type of wedge or the same type of wedge. I know with the newer ones they change up a little bit, but it all pretty much works the same. Um, and so I'm just going to walk you through the process of what we did in order to get ours working. I know it took me couple hours reading on different forms in order to get ours working again I just wanted to make a simple video showing you exactly what we walked through. Starting off I'm just going to walk you through the main components of our power wedge here. We have our two actuating arms. Uh, they run to the same power source and run at the same time. That way you're making sure uh, they don't bind with each other and they push in and out at the same time. We have our angle sensor here and this was one of the issues with ours. Ours was just the person gave up beforehand. They cut off all the wires and just sealed up the back of the boat here and bungeed the wedge upwards. And we wanted to get it fixed and working for our customer here. So that's our sensor there. And I'll show you how the sensor works and how to calibrate it as well as um, just where how we figured it out. So this is that sensor that is on the uh, wedge there that I just showed you. It's the wet or it's the angle sensor. Um, as you can see, the person beforehand that had this boat just cut it off. I don't know why they cut all the wires for everything that was going to this power wedge. And this sensor um, goes into a nut that when the wedge goes up and down adjusts with the wedge based off of where it's in the nut, you can use a pair of pliers and twist the sensor and it will adjust the position. So what this sensor does is sends a signal up to our speed control unit up there um, and it tells you in a certain format what the angle of the sensor is at. And I'll show you exactly how to read where the sensor is at and what settings you want your sensor to be at when calibrating it. So I'll walk you through that next. I'll also show you where our fuse box is for this one. Um, I know in some of the newer models, the fuse is in a line just underneath the driver's seat, but with ours, it was in the actual control box and it's a 30 amp fuse and I'll show you where that is. All right, so I'm gonna show you how you can read the rating on your sensor here. So couple things to keep in mind when working on the wedge. The wedge will not go up unless it is the boat thinks it's going between 2 and 10 miles per hour. For this boat we are able to spin the speed wheel underneath um, the boat and basically mimic as if we are going through the water in order to put our wedge up. Uh, and so that's one way you can go about it. Some of them use a GPS so you may have to do a different technique for that but just keep that in mind for this model at least this 2008 you do have to simulate a speed of at least two miles per hour in order to get the wedge to go up so i'm just turning our boat into accessory here that is going to turn on our screen down here is where we have our wedge deploy our power wedge down our power wedge up button as you can see our wedge is all the way up currently so we do get a wedge reading of all the way up so in order to get into your calibration here on this screen we are going to scroll down till we get to our setup page and then you're going to push this e button now there are four options here um, contrast units tax speed and service you're going to click on you're going to go down to service and then click e um, and then there's four more options which is diagnostic fault codes power wedge and presets obviously you're going to want to do power wedge so you're going to click e there as well so there's two options here one says power wedge present and if you click e on that it will say na so that it's not present but if you leave it as present it'll know it's there and then your next option is to go down here to calibrate so when we click calibrate um, 
we can see ours is already calibrated. Uh, our wedge is not in the fully up position right now, but it is uh, partially up. And as you can see, it gives us this AD reading. That is what our sensor is currently reading for position. And so when you're going down and up, so when we're up here, we want our AD rating to be at around 190 or so. That's where we set ours. And in order to set it, you're just going to click the E button. It's going to say calibrate. We are fully up right now. So we're just going to click E again, and it's going to say done. So now it's going to set our VAL to um, 190 or so. When we want it down, um, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to push the power wedge down button. And you can see as I push that, it drops our AD value, which is the reading on the sensor. And you can see here on our dial, our wedge is going down. It's not all the way down yet as indicated by this, but as we continue to drop down, see now it's at about an 80. Just continue to drop it down. So now we've got an AD rating of zero. And so it knows the wedge is all the way down and we're at the bottom of our sensor, which is exactly where we wanna be. You can have that sensor anywhere between zero and 30. Um, it calibrates on a very minuscule level, so just keep that in mind. So now that we're down, we're just gonna hit calibrate, set. So now it knows it's all the way down. Now, as you can see here, when I try to push up, nothing happens. It's because we are not going more than two miles per hour, so we will not get a reading. So, like I said before, in order to change that reading of the AD right there, you just simply spin uh, this sensor, I use a pliers because it's pretty hard to do with just your fingers. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Make sure you're getting an AD rating when you spin your sensor. When there was no sensor attached or detected, I believe it was giving me a rating of around 560, somewhere right around there. I don't remember exactly, but it, it was just way higher than anything I saw. The highest I've seen now that it's been hooked up is 200. So, first thing to check when you're doing all this is to make sure your sensor, your sensor will uh, not operate if it's over um, a certain number. So make sure it's set to zero when the wedge is all the way down. Here's our wedge down. I just wanted to give you guys a shot of that. Here's that sensor once again. Like I said, it's only held in by two bolts and then wired up through uh, the back of our boat here along with our two actuating arms. One other thing you guys want to make sure to check while working on this stuff is your power wedge uh, fuse. So for ours in this 2008, it's inside this medallion box. There's just two tabs here you can push to get this off. And it is going to be this 30 amp fuse right here. Let me just pull this bad boy out. As you can see, it's just a standard um, 30 amp fuse that goes in this slot for unfortunately on this model there is no jumper to bypass this fuse right here um you can see our black and white wires come in right here uh, for our power wedge and those run back to the actuators so these wires right here have nothing to do with the sensor the sensor wires run directly up into the speed control unit up top that we were looking at the diagnostic for before. All right, one last thing I wanna show you guys is this speed wheel that is on the bottom of our boat. This is what I see. You can just spin this and it spins freely. All I did was flick that um, while my, uh, while someone else was up in the boat pushing the up button on the wedge. So this, you will need two people in order to do this step of the process but I just want to show you guys what that looks like. All right, so that wraps it up for the troubleshooting we did here with this power wedge. Um, remember, first thing to check is the fuse. Second thing to check is the calibration and if you're getting a reading from that sensor and that that reading while the wedge is down is between zero and 30 and that when it's up, 
it's not above uh, around 200 or so. Um, also keep in mind your actuators can go bad. Uh, if that's the case, you will have to replace those. That's a really easy job to do. Um, and yeah, other than that, it's a pretty simple mechanism. It just gives lots of issues from what I've read online. So I just wanted to walk you guys through what we did in order to figure that out. Uh, if it's none of those, you may run into a wiring issue, in which case you just need to check um, all the wires. I know these ones go straight into right behind where the motor is and then travel up the bottom of the boat to our center console there. That's where I was able to locate them all. Um, but yeah, make sure to leave uh, any helpful tips if you've had to work on this um, in the comments below to help other people out. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure to leave those as well in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer those um, with what I did while working on this. And yeah, we're all just trying to help each other out here, so.